All right, guys. Kenny Smith, Total Force Holdings Incorporated. If you've watched my channel more than for more than about five minutes, you know that I'm a pretty big proponent of uh, the nine millimeter. Uh, that being said, I have carried oh, my, my filming apparatus over here. I have carried 40. I have carried 45. I have carried 38. I have carried 357. I have carried 38. Uh, special carried 380. Um, I've carried several calibers of, of handguns for different purposes, and um, in the end, I, I've picked up a few things along the way from different people, but um, the, one of the big things that gets to me is the consistent arguing over 9mm versus 45. You hear 9mm guys like me that say, uh, eh, pistol bullets, pistol bullets, pistol bullet, and the 45 guys say, oh, but the 45, more power, Thompson, Lagarde, da, 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 yeah. First off, let's talk about the Thompson Lagarde study. Or Lagarde or the Grant. Anyway, the the study with Colonel Thompson uh, during the Moro insurrection. These Moros are soaking up 38 long Colt pistol bullets. Just bop, 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 bop. I mean, you're talking about about 150 grain bullet flying at about 800 feet per second. I mean, 38 long Colt is not something to write home about. It's not something to compare to a 38 special or a 9 millimeter. Okay, it's not exactly a barn burner when it comes to power. Um, and then you hear the same thing, the 45 Long Colts coming out of, stud, of uh, storage to be used in the Moro Insurrection. And lo and behold, Filipino Moros are soaking up 30-40 Crag rifle rounds. By 30-40, I don't mean 32-40, I mean 30-40, 30-40 Crag, 30-40 Government, whatever you want to call it. The U.S. Cal rifle round. If they can soak up rifle rounds, your pistol is irrelevant. All right, so that's just bollocks. All right, I'm not knocking Thompson and Lagarde. I'm just saying that we know things a little better now. So, we're going to talk about 9mm versus 45 ACP. Alright, uh, the reason I talk about these two is they're both standard pressure cartridges. Ah, damn, something's itching in my nose. Sorry about that. Um, they're both, they don't batter the guns as much as a 40 or a 357 SIG or 10mm or anything like that. Okay, so we're going to stick to 9mm and 45 ACP. Each cartridge has its pros and its cons, and we're going to go over those. The thing with a pistol is pistols are like ice picks. They don't really punch big holes, and there's nothing special to them. They just punch a punch a hole. Uh, whereas rifles or rifle bullets are going fast enough, they cavitate and rip apart and do all this fun, fancy stuff. Mm, excuse me. But uh, anyway... Uh, I carry 9mm because I think the pros outweigh the cons. Um, I can't find but a few cons on a 9mm versus I can't find but a few pros on the 45. Okay? Uh, and some of it has to do with the weapons themselves and some of it has to do with the bullet. But what has to do with, I've limited what's on the weapons themselves to what is because of the bullet, if that makes sense. We're going to start with 9mm. Actually, you know what? We'll start with 45. Ah, nope, I will start with a 9mm. Uh, the pros of the 9mm, muzzle velocity. Okay? When we look at the 45 ACP, the uh, 185 grain gold dot and all the ballistics figures that I got, I took off the manufacturers. I use Spear, Law Enforcement, and Winchester Granger figures. Why? Because they're law enforcement bullets. They're used in more shootings than other bullets. All right? So that's why I use those. The 185 grain gold dot hollow point from Spear. Steps out of the muzzle 1,050 feet per second, delivering 453 foot-pounds of energy. Uh, at 100 yards, it's 886 feet per second, 322 foot-pounds. The 200 grain plus P gold dot, these are in 45, it's stepping out at 1080 with 518 foot-pounds. And at 100 yards, it's dropped to 930 foot per second and 384 foot-pounds. The Ranger... 230 grain standard pressure. I couldn't find the 100 yard figures on any of the Winchester products. So my 100 yard figures are all spear products. Uh, the 230 grain Ranger steps out at 935 feet per second, 446 foot pounds at 15 feet. Uh, the Ranger Plus P, 230 grain is 985 feet per second, 495 foot pounds also at 15 feet. Whereas the 230 grain standard pressure gold dots, 890 feet per second at the muzzle with 404 foot pounds of energy. And at... Um, 100 yards has dropped to 805 foot per second, 331 foot pounds. Whereas the 9 millimeter, when we look at the 115 grain gold dot hollow point, 1,210 feet per second, 374 feet, uh, foot pounds at the muzzle. And that's a, that's a standard pressure load. At 100 yards, that's 981 feet per second, 246 foot pounds. While it does not have the, um, the energy, the kinetic energy, it's still traveling faster 
then the 45 ACP loads do at the muzzle, but that 9mm is at 100 yards. So that, that comes into effect when we start talking trajectory in a little bit. I continue. The 115 grain plus P plus 9mm in the gold dot hollow point form, which I think this bullet would do absolutely great. 115 grain gold dots, a proven bullet. The 115 grain plus P plus 9mm loading at 1300 feet per second at the muzzle, also on the gold dot, has proven itself immensely over the years. And it's getting about 432 foot pounds at the muzzle. So you see, with that plus P plus 9mm 115, we're getting into 185 grain 45 ACP territory. Okay, and we're actually exceeding 230 grain standard pressure gold dot bullet at least at the uh, at the muzzle. So in, when it comes to kinetic energy, but that that's figured it. Then we go at uh, 100 yards. That 115 grain plus P plus gold dot still traveling over a thousand feet per second, thousand twenty feet per second, 266 foot pounds. The Ranger 124 plus P again. The Ranger products I could not find the hundred yard figures on. That's 1,170 feet per second at 377 foot-pounds, 15 feet. The Ranger 127 plus P plus, which is what I carry. Uh, Winchester's website says 1240 feet per second on, on there, but the box says 1250. I guess that's a nominal figure. At uh, 433 foot-pounds, also at 15 feet. And the 147 grain 9 millimeter Ranger, 985 feet per second, 317 foot-pounds at 15 feet. So what we see is it is entirely possible to at the muzzle have a nine millimeter delivering as much kinetic energy at a much higher velocity than a 45 acp um so the power gap is waning is not what it used to be uh and that muzzle velocity is what causes all your actions what separates the performance of a 102 grain remington gold saber 380 from a 100 grain protected hollow point 243 winchester they're both around 100 grains of bullet weight but one of them destroys whatever's in front of it and as far as soft tissue goes, and the other one punches a clean hole. It's muzzle velocity. The 243 is traveling so much faster. All right, now granted, we're not getting into the level to do fancy shit when it comes to pistol velocities, but every little bit does certainly help. Um, so there again, uh, the 9mm is just much, 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 much faster, which leads us to a flatter trajectory. When something is traveling through the air faster, it's going further distance before gravity can affect how what what uh how far it's pulled down. So it's got a little bit uh, flatter drop right now. This also has to do with one of the cons of the nine millimeter. We'll talk about, and that's a lighter weight bullet. Um, the 115 grain gold dot hollow point at 100 yards is down nine inches flat. The plus P plus gold dot also 115 grains is down 7.1 inches, and the uh, the 124 grain plus P gold dot is down eight flat. And the 147 grain subsonic gold dot hollow point is down 11.9. Um, whereas the 45, the 185 grain gold dot, which is pretty quick, is down 11.1 at 100. The 200 grain plus peak gold dot is down 10.2. And the 230 grain standard pressure gold dot is down 15.3. So when we're talking about uh, high velocity 9 millimeter versus a standard pressure 45, when you're shooting at 100 yards, for whatever reason, this could be active shooter interdiction or something like that, you're talking about double the drop here, so that's double the holdover you have to deal with, that's double the chances to miss. Um, now we get into the big reason that I'm a fan of 9mm is capacity. Capacity, capacity, capacity. I've got so many more bullets. Um, you know, this is the mag for my ADC gum, it's a Glock 17 that I've cut down to take uh, 19 mags. 15 rounds in it. Uh, you know, you can get 18 rounds in a factory Glock 17, 16 rounds in a factory Glock 19, about the same thing in similar guns from uh, other manufacturers in 9mm. You just don't get that with a 45. You've got, you know, and when you have more ammo in the gun, you've got more opportunities to, to win the fight. All right, that's just, that's just fact of the matter. Hell, I can take um, my backup gun, which is actually cut to run Glock um, 26, Glock 19 cut to run 26 mags, and I've got 13 rounds in that gun. And that's what I carry on my ankles. My last ditch gun has 13 chances to win the fight. That can't be said of something like uh, Detonix Subcompact 45 ACP or something like that. Um, it's just not there. That fat cartridge, um, which is one of the advantages of it, takes up more space. And plus, we get into the next big advantage to 9mm, which is the size of the weapons. 9mm is not a very big bullet. You don't have to make the grip but so big. You have to make that grip so much bigger to fit plenty of 45 ACP ammunition to make it competitive between the two. Uh, light recoil. 9mm does not have much recoil to it. Um, I've never once heard anybody complain about the recoil of a 9mm. There are smaller people that can't handle the recoil of a 45. Um, 
while I have no issue with the 45 of uh, the recoil of a 45, uh, I find it much easier to shoot a 9mm just because with less recoil, my muzzle comes back on target. Anybody that says otherwise is a flat out liar. Um, anytime you have less movement, you're going to be back on target faster, faster split times if that's if that concerns you. Um, you're going to be able to get more shots on target in less period of time, which is always a good thing. Ammunition availability. Ammunition availability. And this isn't a big issue to any to most people, but if you're the type that travels abroad, or you may have to travel abroad, or you have plans on traveling abroad, uh, if you're already used to shooting a 9mm, you can find 9mm guns elsewhere. 9mm uh, is one of the most popular handgun rounds in the world. It is the most popular handgun round in the world. And the 45 ACP is not so much outside of this country. So that's not really an issue for everybody, but it is an issue for some people's name and issue availability. Okay, so what's good about the 9mm? Very fast bullets, good muzzle velocity. Flat trajectory because of that. Light recoil, magazine capacity, ammo ability, and the weapons are typically smaller than similarly set up 45s. Now we get to the downsides. The bullets are not very big. It's a small diameter bullet. That means there's less lead to spread, so you're not going to get as much expansion out of a 9mm as you will of a 45. Plus, with a smaller diameter bullet, you have less chance of... Granted, we're talking about a millimeter here. until you, We're talking, well, just, just over a millimeter, about a millimeter and a half, two millimeters. But that's still that much more chance of hitting something vital. Plus, when you get into the expansion, 45 does have more lead to spread. That does help you there. So, if anything, a 45 is a crutch for poor shooting. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, anyway, uh, that is a disadvantage of 9mm. It does fire a smaller diameter bullet. Uh, one thing that came to be in the 80s and what we called the Wonder Nine Years, which granted I wasn't but a kid then, but I read a lot of gun writers who were. During the Wonder Nine Years, you start seeing law enforcement hit potentials go down. Why? Because they were used to a six-shot revolver with maybe 12 spare rounds, and now they've got almost that just in the, the magazine, you know, the Smith 5906 or Sig 226, Beretta 92, Glock 17. The, the first of these modern double-stack 9mm that actually worked for hollow point ammunition, the Wonder 9s, they shot more than they probably needed to because they thought, well, I have more bullets. Okay, that is a con of the 9mm. It, that does happen with some people. Um, lighter weight bullets also don't, the lighter weight bullets, the 9mm fires also don't penetrate as deeply as the 45 ACP. Lighter weight, they don't retain their kinetic energy through as much mass. Um, that is definitely a con of the 9mm. Um, so, we're trading a really fast bullet for a bullet that might not, might, might not penetrate as deeply. We're trading bigger bullets for smaller bullets, but we get more of them. And we're also having that mentality we also have to keep in mind that just because we have a lot of bullets doesn't mean we need to use all of them unless we have to unless we actually need to use them we don't probably shouldn't um one of those kind of things and in exchange for having to play with the mind there we're getting a weapon that that fits most people a little bit better and doesn't have much recoil what is with a 45 we'll start with the pros of a 45 it does fire a large diameter bullet 0.45 ACP is a full tenth of an inch bigger than a 9mm, which is usually about 0.355, whereas a uh, 45 ACP is usually about, about 0.451. So it is it is a little bit bigger. It, um, can't argue with, with math on that one. Um, a lower capacity typically causes people to think more about their marksmanship. People that only have 6, 7, 8, 9 bullets tend to shoot a little bit better than people that have 18, 19, 20. Uh, just because they, they don't want to reload in the middle of a fight, which is totally understandable, and I completely concur with that. You don't want to break a gun that's working. That's what you're doing when you're reloading it. You don't want to break a gun that's working if you don't have to. Uh, and because the 45 fires heavier, heavier bullets, they do tend to penetrate a little bit deeper. Let me add this on the penetration. Now that I've gave the 45, it's pro there. Because of the FBI protocol, service ammunition is going to perform about the same when it comes to penetration. Okay? But keep in mind, you could also find... Uh, other ammunition that doesn't fit the FBI protocol that might give the 45 that advantage. So I'm certainly going to chalk that up as a pro to the 45 ACP. Uh, now we're going to talk about the cons. Lower muzzle velocity. We talked about these earlier. The 185 grain gold dot is only getting about 10-50 feet per second out of the muzzle. Um, kinetic energy is good at 453 foot pound, but at 100 yards it's dropped down to 886 feet per second. And I mean we're seeing all the 9 millimeter loads even the subsonic, let me check, I do not have a subsonic at 100, but, um, you know, you're, you're doing subsonic, just over supersonic performance here with that, which, not bad, but it could be better, whereas 200 grain plus P gold dot 
is stepping out at 1080, hitting 930 at 100. Uh, again, kinetic energy went up because of the slightly higher velocity. Uh, the Ranger 230 grain plus P, that's uh, pretty fast. The Ranger 230 plus P is 985. The standard pressure Ranger is 935 at the muzzle. And the 230 grain gold dot, according to Spear, is only hitting 890. I mean, you've got... Let me check these numbers again up top. I've got all this wrote down on my computer screen. But you've got 9mm bullets that are traveling faster at 100 yards than that, that bullet is at the muzzle. So that's definitely a con. Uh, again, you've got a higher, because of that lower velocity, you've got a higher drop rate. The 185 grain gold dot hollow point drops 11.1 inches at 100 yards. Uh, the 200 grain plus P gold dot 10.2 inches. And 230 grain gold dot 15.3. That And you've got the, the highest drop when it comes to 9 millimeter at 100 yards is that 147. And it has dropped 11.9 inches. So, you know, you've got... Poor, slow 9 millimeter that's getting about the same as 45 ACP drop. Um, you also, because you're shooting a bigger bullet, you've got less capacity. One of those things. Um, ammunition, in, in the words of Paul Gomez, ammo in the gun is time in the fight. Uh, the more ammo you have, the more opportunities you have to stop that fight before it becomes a problem. Plus also, the more chances you have to, before you have to worry about breaking a gun that that was working a minute ago in the hope of keeping it working so you know that's definitely a con to have less ammunition a 45 does have more recoil than a 9 millimeter we talked about that earlier it's not exactly prohibitive but you will shoot a not the same gun in 9 millimeter better than that gun in 45 uh, if you look at 1911 guys even though it's heresy in 1911 world um, you will shoot if you're a 1911 guy you will shoot a 9 millimeter 1911 better than you will a 45 1911 that's just fact I mean it's just less mass moving Less less jolt to you, less disturbance of your shooting position, and all this good shit. Um, if you're carrying a 45 ACP, the weapon's usually going to be larger and heavier. Look at a Glock 30 compared to a Glock 26. I mean, it's, it's a bigger gun. It's just got to be. Um, if you're if you're dealing with a single stack, look at a um, the subcompact like uh, Detonics 1911s compared to like. Trying to think of a metal frame to like a uh, Smith 3913. Um, you know, it, it, it's a bigger, it's a significantly bigger and heavier gun. Um, now I'm not 100% certain on the uh, the numbers on the 3913 or the Detonics. Hopefully, a Smith guy or a um, 1911 guy can chime in on that. But typically, guns for 45 are going to be larger and heavier than guns in 9 millimeter. And one thing that I'll bring up on that immediately is the uh, Glock 34 versus the Glock 41. Uh, the Glock 34 is about the same size as a 1911, but it holds a lot more bullets and it's lighter. Okay, um, keep that in mind as well. Then you look at the uh, Glock 17 compared to the Glock 21. Okay, it's a much bigger gun. Just one of those things. If you're going to carry 45, you're going to have to carry a physically larger gun as well. And then you have the one that's not so much a big deal to everybody, to most people, but the ammo is not as available abroad in 45 ACP as it is here in America. Um, so, neither one is a bad caliber. I have my preference, and I made my bed with a 9mm. Um, hopefully, some of the ballistics I've just sent, you know, don't, you don't, uh, may not like them, but they are what they are. And I took those direct from the product manufacturers. I, you know, I didn't even copy and paste them. I typed them number for number. Um, and you can find those numbers off uh, Winchester LE, or I just look up Winchester LE Ranger Ammunition, and it'll pop right up, or um, Spear Gold Dot Law Enforcement Ammunition. It's like le.vista outdoor or something. I don't know. Anyway, it was it was a rather long, complicated URL, but um, all those numbers came straight from there. Now, when it comes to actual shootings, the nine millimeter forty five have been neck and neck for a long time. Uh, this is not the eighties. This is not the nineties. This is not even the early two thousands. Modern ammunition has advanced to the point where the nine millimeter is performing as well as the forty five ACP, the forty Smith and Wesson. Uh, I think the 357 SIG does better on barriers and the 10 millimeter is just a whole nother animal. So, um, when you're looking at typical service ammunition, you're going to get about the same performance. So, this is where the 45 guys start chiming in about old and proven. Yeah, well, the 9 millimeter is just as proven. Because while the 45 has been in existence since 1905, the 9 millimeter has been in existence since 1902. So, it's one of those things. They've both been here for well over a century. They've both been killing people for well over 100 years. Um, they both work if you do your part. 
In the end, a pistol is a pistol and a rifle is a rifle. Don't expect rifle-like performance out of a pistol because neither caliber will give it to you. 45 ACP is a big, slow, fat pistol cartridge. The 9mm is a little, somewhat skinnier, faster cartridge. I, I, I personally side with speed. Um, your mileage may vary. I hope you enjoyed this video. It is absolutely sure to piss some people off, but that really doesn't bother me. I hope you enjoy it. This is Kenny Smith with Total Force Holding. Hope everybody stays, stays safe, stays frosty, stays dangerous, and stays in the fight.